Nate Bargatze at Helium Comedy Club this weekend. Nate, you're one of the hottest names in comedy right now. Welcome to a bar at yeah. 9 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is great. Uh, what's up, Hey, man? Nate, jump in this car so we can take it to the south side of St. Louis you want to at 9 a.m. This, yeah. uh, this is the dream. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know that, but this is the dream. That's right. Nate's rocking a Vanderbilt T-shirt. Uh, what's going yeah. on with that, buddy? You, is, did you go to Vanderbilt? Uh, no. Okay. No, I wish. Uh, <laughs> I was a huge Vanderbilt that. fan. Yeah. Uh, they're, yeah, I love uh, their sports. That's all we had. Like uh, before, we didn't have the Titans uh, growing right. up, so uh, college was big. And Vanderbilt, uh, I, like, was our local team, and so I grew Very up nice. a big fan. And here you we got are. a David Price jersey. Uh, I don't have his jersey, but I mean, I remember watching him when he was like, I mean, Sonny Gray. Uh, <laughs> nice. I mean, there's a whole yeah. uh, Danzy Swanson is in uh, for the Braves. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. So they're uh, Dansby Swanson part of one of the biggest fleece trades uh, in MLB history recently. LaRusso yeah. traded Shelby Miller for Dansby Swanson, yeah. who's going to be. And a he star just got drafted. Yeah. yeah, I mean he was brand just new. brand new, number one, uh, and then yeah, yeah, there's way it really was a cra- crazy trade. Like Tony, it, it, like Tony Larusa comes here, just dominates for several years, and then Gardner, what the hell? Like, is that going to go down? No, as he one dominated. Of he wasn't in charge of personnel. <laughs> he was yeah. just in charge of looking angry on the on the side of uh, the game. So we got Nate Bargatze here with us at Southtown Pub. Very excited. Nate, uh, Netflix has been huge for you. Yeah. I feel like it's been an awesome launching pad for a ton of comics, actually, yeah. too. Uh, big difference in the last like what two three years in uh, in your career trajectory oh, yeah. shows it's, yeah uh, yeah it's uh, that it, uh, the stand ups came out season one and I was first which was a huge thing and so that uh, it, it's changed everything I mean like you know, people uh, you know a lot more people know who you are and a lot yeah. more people come to the shows and and you're based out of L A right I'm in Nashville oh you're in, oh you yeah. are based in Nashville I'm, I was yeah. thinking you're based in L A I, I lived in L A I'm okay. from Nashville. Well, yeah, so, that makes uh, sense, yeah. Yeah, but they uh, – I lived in Chicago, New York, and L.A. I, I was gone for, like, about 13 years. Okay. And then uh, I've been back for three and a half. How wild is that? And, Travis, you can back me. Like, it's so weird. Like, that's acceptable. Nashville is a rocking city now, it is. man. Like, it's – They're uh, – they, it's like a third entertainment capital. They have – all the agencies are in Nashville. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Like, and it's special and it's uh, – it's, you know, it feels good. Like, I always say, like, because I was able to move back home, uh, I, which I, I'm on the road so much anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you know, it's like Nashville is a place that you can move back and everybody's like, oh, that's cool. Like, it's not your, you know, right. like, just, you know, I'm not somewhere crazy. <laughs> I don't Especially know where, when it comes yeah. to the cost of living, yeah, I yeah. imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's got to be a big difference. Have you, uh, have you had much crossover with the country music business there as well? Uh, no, like, not like... Uh, like the CMT country, not, like the, the, CMT. not the real, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the real country. Yeah. So, you, so fun, like, you know what I mean when yeah, I say it. Like yeah. you have like guys like Sturgill Simpson just ripping Nashville yeah. business a new one. Yeah. But overall, it's 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 built on country music. Yeah. And even if it is the commercialized version, I'm yeah. just like I'm trying to think of uh, of Josh uh, had a show on CMT. Uh, I can't think. The com- uh, he's a stand up. Either way, yeah. you have oh, them, Josh Wolf. Yeah, Josh yeah. Wolf. I'm, I yeah. love Josh. He's great, but. Uh, it's interesting to see some of that crossover, and now N- Nashville is literally, uh, it's very acceptable as a major city and an entertainment hub. Yeah, yeah, they're all, I mean, they're really, every agent's, agency is there, and uh, they're, you know, it, it's rolling. I mean, that it, like, it, Nashville's grown so much that it is, it's like a place that you can move to, and uh, it's not a weird thing, and uh, you can do that, you know, this predator, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, hockey, but we're predators. How predators crazy is like, that? It's, uh, yeah. They, uh, I was mad. We, we, I went to the when we went to the Stanley Cup. I went to the game we lost. Uh, nice job. Jeff. And then yes, yeah, thanks. I paid. <laughs> I paid nine hundred thousand dollars to go watch them. Lose. <laughs> I mean, it was like and that was like it was cheaper to uh, fly to Pittsburgh and get a hotel wow. than it was oh, to, to get watch it, it in, to watch it in Nashville. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. When you think like I get that like where Blackhawks fans will come here because it's cheaper because it's yeah. like, freaking St. Louis. But that is wild to think of that to fly to the East Coast and attend a hockey and buy a game. ticket. That's insane. Like, yeah, that actually because they just weren't. Now it was just such a hot like thing to go to because it was, you know, obviously we never went to a Stanley Cup and uh, the cities have gotten very much behind the Predators yeah. and uh, they were very exciting. Well, we're still excited, uh, and so it was. Yeah, downtown was like packed and 
they had it all shut off and people were watching it. You know, it was, it's a, and then you see too, and it's kind of crazy that Nashville has that success, and then Vegas with the run that they just yeah. had, like. Vegas and Nashville are like the most exciting places to go watch hockey. Like what? That's yeah. that's absolutely. Well, that's insane. what I would get so mad. Like cause ESPN was like, I feel when it was happening, they were just like not, like they were like, yeah, Nashville's not a hockey town. Like which is obvious. I get that, but but it was like they're they're really in on board, and they just they they did sometimes. Sometimes they just kept like I feel like they would just kind of over like brush over it not really like yeah and i was like right. man the, the whole city's like watching this and like it's 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 and uh, we're i think we are now coming out going look we are a hockey town and yeah we weren't i mean we didn't grow up watching hockey right. and like uh who cares you're, yeah, you're now, you're, now. Yeah, yeah, now it's great yeah. you're like everybody's they've been there for 20 years though i think and yeah. uh there, you know, everybody's like watched it, and you know, you try to learn more. You, you're, uh, I still don't know everything, but like you're, you know, we got a soccer team now too, and uh, so that, I think that will take off, and that will be big. And like, what's so wrong? Like, anytime there's something entertaining to do while you're having a couple beers, like that yeah. kind of translates everywhere, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, like, I'm fine. It, and finally, you guys have to, something to talk about other than uh, Steve McNair. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Dang, man, you got to bring up McNair like that? Dang. I'm sorry if it was uh, another guy that pe- – sorry, what was that, Gardner? Was- oh, I, I was just going to ask if now with the soccer team, if you're going to throw catfish on the pitch Ooh, fair question. like they do that on the sure. ice yeah. mm-hmm. at the hockey games. Uh, you speak you know, for all of Nashville. As all, as, all right, like as the spokesperson for Nashville. Uh, <laughs> kind of yeah, board of tours You know what, we will, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we will do it. I bet that they would. I know. <laughs> you know, that's good fish, man. Out there, Come on. Yeah, <laughs> throw it in the grass and it gets grass all over it. It's very right little bit. It's like a little grosser. But you try it and you're like, yeah. oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, gotta, I feel like uh, hockey players are hardy enough that that wouldn't bother them. Soccer players, I don't know. They may be a little like, like what are you doing? Like, yeah. what's happening? Here? Well, hockey, it's like if it happens, it's very noticeable. <laughs> Because it's like yes. it's ice. The ice rink's not that big, right? And, and then, like like soccer though, like the field's like enormous. Like someone right. could do it, and you're like, did they? Anybody see? You're like, oh, they, they, no one's seen it yet. Somebody's a trip over yeah, a week later. Tri- yeah. yeah, what? Like finding like uh, a, you find a golf bar or like an Easter egg when you mow your yard, <laughs> and then you're like, like a, like a year later, you're like, oh yeah, like, no one ever finds all of them. <laughs> That's so true. Nate Bargates and Jordan, as you can go see him. If if they're not sold out by now, congratulations. I heard Saturday, one of the early shows Saturday. Early, yeah. That's super yeah. exciting for somebody, like, because that means so much to your next trip through St. Louis. Your next, like, yeah, like yeah. the business, man. You yeah, gotta, no, that's a lot of it. It's like an old school way of uh, you got to just show up and then keep coming back and, you know, and, get, and, have, and build a new act. And so then people keep showing up and, and then. With, with now, of course, with the Netflix special, it, it, with what Netflix has done when it comes to the stand-ups, uh, has it made it easier for guys who have been working so long to finally get on? Is it now the folks who have been working in the game for well over a decade, are they finally getting their shine now that Netflix has made such a concerted effort to put these specials out as often as possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they have definitely do it. I mean, that, but then there's part of it that comes that they put so many out yeah. that you're like, you, you know, uh, you, you you can get lost on them. Sure, it's just as easy. Like I mean, the shows. I, yeah, there's shows that like people are like this show's amazing. You're like I don't I've never even heard of it. <laughs> right. And it's like it could <laughs> right. be on Netflix, and you're like I never I've never seen you know. Uh, and they have a following, or they could and not. So I don't know. It's yeah, but it's it's definitely like it's they made their this year's gonna be a big year. For, I think right. Netflix is doing like. 300 or, uh, or you know from around the globe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, so we'll see you know i wanted to give you a compliment too and it's not because you're within arm's reach of me specials that probably are helps yeah it does <laughs> specials are super hard to translate in my opinion because i've seen i don't know how many live comedy performances and people will just kill me they'll have a great night of oh they're so talented it was fun to see them then you see their special and you're like uh i don't know 
Yours translated really well to the uh, special, awesome. man. That was very, that was very cool. Thank I haven't, you. I haven't seen you live, and yeah. that's one of, and I say it on well, here a lot. Where you, it's that's like, not as good. Good. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm the guy that just stay home. And watch <laughs> yeah. the special. Terrible live. You stand back yeah. to the live crew. Yeah. And you save the good yeah, stuff yeah, for yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that, that's an issue, man. No, no, it have is. Somebody, and maybe the material's not right. Maybe the release time's right. Yeah. Maybe it's you have a couple drinks and you're in a good mood sitting in the club. I don't, I don't know. No, it's a. I always say you have to see it with like comics. Like uh, sometimes you can watch a comic and be like, "Man, this guy is unreal." And then as a comic, you know, like, "Well, I need to see him somewhere else." Yeah. Because like sometimes you, I mean, as a comic, you can even get caught up in like, I've watched people and you think they're like, you're like, this guy could be the best guy I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, it's but it's just a room and it's the energy of the right. room and you're like. You get caught up in it, and then you like see them somewhere else, and you're like, "Oh man, this guy is real bad." <laughs> you're like, "Oh my god, I told people about him." You're like, you're like, "I told people to watch him." My like, reputation's on the yeah. line. And you're like, "Oh, I don't know. Was I drinking that night?" There's so much stuff plays into it. You definitely do. Try, How you know, often does it happen to comedians when they like? So I would imagine they'll go to a room, they'll go to a city, and they will kill, and they will have the same energy and and the same jokes, and they go to another city and not so much. How often is that? a theme amongst comedians to be able to have a those type of nights. It, it, those nights, when you first start, like in New York, was like the biggest. New York, you'd only do like 10 minutes, but you'd go right. like, you'd be doing clubs. So, you, I mean, you would do, uh, the most I ever did, I did seven shows in one night there, like where it was, and you were doing maybe 10 minutes a night, but you're running around club to club. But there, I mean, there was times you could bomb in the same club bet- between one show and the next show. Or you could have, they had this thing called, uh, this club of theirs, just the Broadway comedy club, and they had a, place downstairs and upstairs and so you could just do both so you'd go downstairs oh nice and then you'd walk upstairs and perform like but it was funny to like uh you would go downstairs and like destroy and then you go upstairs and it wouldn't be good and then you're like you almost and then that crowd thinks you're terrible that crowd is like walking out being like god you're unbelievable right and you and then they're all leaving together where you're <laughs> right you know where the audience is like what? That guy was like, garbage. And Why are they like, taking pictures? No, that him? crowd was, yeah. Right. And he's like, no, you suck. You were, this audience, you guys were not fun. I can't tell you guys enough. Go see Nate Bargacy uh, and our friends Bobby Jaycox and Rafe Williams. These are going to show out. It's going to be a, a sellout. It's going to be a serious, busy weekend at Helium, and uh, you'll see why, certainly, whenever you go and enjoy the show. We are doing this thing. So there's a music festival here. We're bringing comedy to it for the first time. I'm sure you know Taylor Tomlinson, yeah. Mia Jackson. Are you familiar with her? She's on, she's on yeah. tour with Amy Schumer right okay. now. Uh, and then Matt Reif, who's a young guy who was on Wild and Out. So. Yeah. Then we've got ten very strong local comics. Tips for an outdoor to tent. Thirty thousand people running around. Uh, Have you done the music comedy yeah. state? I mean, you're from Nashville, I assume. Yeah, you've yeah. done plenty. I've of done them. Bonnaroo. And, yeah, uh, I've done a lot of music uh, stuff. Uh, Sasquatch Fest. That was an unbelievable. Was it's it a like, good time? Yeah, that's like. Uh, yeah, that's a. I mean, there's like a big gorge, mm-hmm. which is. You know, like a valley. I don't know. What is it like doing a comedy in front of a festival crowd? It's different. It's different. I, did, I mean, I did like Bonnaroo. Was like we were in a tent in Bonnaroo, so yeah. You're like you just need people to know why they're there. Okay. Like so, if they're <laughs> like, such a good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good yeah. point. Yeah. Put the ecstasy down for three seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like you can't, it can't be just like a surprise where people are just like, oh, there's comedy here too. Like <laughs> so, if they're and that's like a lot of our life in comedy is like we we show up with bars we right. we show. We do a show here every yeah. Thursday, and people get it. It's a good crowd, but yeah. there's certainly times where you're like, come on, yeah. hey, focus. And they're, yeah. like, and they're like, I don't want focus right. on what? Like, like, Dude, like, I worked all day. Like, I'm here for a drink, man. Like, yeah. I don't, like, uh, so it's, it's finding that perfect mix of not being too, like, this is a comedy show, yeah. and then also just being like, hey, check them out. Yeah. It's funny. It you know? could be fun. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. The, so the, the outdoor, I mean, look, honestly, like, if people know that they're there. And, like, when you do outdoor shows, like, uh, you can't always hear the audience. It's always kind of sometimes tough. Yeah, like, weird, You yeah. can't hear them laugh. And, you know, our timing is off of uh, an audience. Uh, so it, when you can't do that, you just kind of – sometimes you're doing the jokes and you're like – you get off and you're like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it could have been real bad. It could have been the best show I've ever done in my life. It, it, would that be – I guess it's kind of comparable to, like, what you hear, like, a network showcase is where you do your stand-up for, what, like – 
10 executives or oh, something. Yeah. Like, maybe it's like, hey, get in that mode. Like, pretend this is Yeah, the, just pretend something. it's going to be that. Hope to hear. Look at their faces. <laughs> got to look at faces. <laughs> no, never See mind the 20-year-olds in basketball jerseys yeah. with sideways hats on. White dudes, of course. Yeah. So that yeah, is yeah, the, yeah. So the a festival surprise. attire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So When, you, when you, you've you done Conan, you've done Fallon, you've done the Netflix, what is – the natural transition is it to all right let's continue to get out there on the road still build up more on the craft or do you kind of start to think about what can i do on the television film end when do you begin having conversations with yourself or your management team about all right now we've got in front of some big audiences let's start transitioning yeah. to the next phase or is is, uh, is that even a desire yeah yeah no I, i'm writing a show right now oh and, nice uh, so uh, like uh, just a sitcom we sold it to abc and uh, hopefully, going to just shoot a pilot. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. And uh, I've done it. I've done it a bunch, but like I've never made a pilot. And so this is. You so know, wait, that's it's a been whole purchased ride. and everything. Like yeah, this has yeah. But I, I've sold four shows before right. that where they pay you to write a script. Yep. Right, yeah. right. And then uh, they look at your script, and then they they take another group that they're going to shoot pilots out of the all the people that sold scripts. And uh, it's like very hard to even sell a script. Like yeah. uh, I had some like in it. Like there's always a, I love like a saying. I can't remember exactly that, but she was. It was like something like it's almost like it's it's very hard to even get a pitch sold. It's even more harder to like s- make a pilot, and then it's like impossible to make a TV show. That's a like bet, that's yes. the. It's like the, that's how hard you know because it's just they listen to so much so much stuff. So to get something on the air is it's nearly impossible. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I mean they, in the process. Yeah, yeah, you go through it all. So like uh, I've done. So we've done a bunch of these. So this one. Uh, we're doing with ABC now, and then we'll see. You know, I mean, I have no idea. Like, how is, this is as far as it could get us talking about it right now. Well, uh, okay. yeah, and, yeah, that's that's like, and then think about that too, where it's like Modern Family goes for ni- how many yeah. how many seasons now? I think it's 14, the last year, or something yeah. insane like yeah. that. And well, those kids are adults. Right, now. <laughs> they have their own kinda, kids now. Kind of weird. It's, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I looked at one. Like, I follow one, of the girl, the one, of the youngest. She's. Uh, I follow her on like Instagram and like uh, I mean yeah she's like confusing she's, yeah it's weird it's I mean, nice they were there but then the, like, oh, the, oh, yeah, oh the boy oh. the the son I've like looked at he'll steal your too. girl yeah he's <laughs> I mean, he's a he's a he might be twenty I don't know right, how yeah. like I mean like you know you're like an adult and you're like oh yeah, it's funny to see them grow up like uh, and then you yeah it's weird. It, it definitely is. Guys, if you're just tuning in, Nate Bargatze is here. He's at Helium Comedy Club all weekend long. Real quick, want to remind you, St. Louis Counseling Services sponsors the show. Number one professional counseling in the St. Louis area. If you are an individual you know is looking for counseling services, they also provide for elementary schools, businesses, all of the sorts. stlouiscounseling.org is the website. Check that out today. Uh, Nate, we're excited to have you and Travis. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, one thing we've noticed, uh, certainly when, when, when Midwest comedians head out to either L.A. or New Careful York. Careful now. He'd call himself a Southern comedian. Southern, probably, Southern yeah. comedian. You're right. You're right. Watch but one it. thing, when you have people who you know certainly have humble beginnings and come from humble roots, they tend to do very well out in L.A. and New York. What about your upbringing helped you transition to jumping into the industry? Uh, I come from a lot of money. I was going to say, no, his family started Bass yeah. Pro Shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't. I was looking for an in on it. I was like, when did I say it? It's like, like a helicopter out, out of the street. I'm like, I flew here in a helicopter. I don't know. Yeah, like, like, don't, I, you, don't you know the Bargatze yeah. bait and tackle yeah. fortune? Yeah. He's actually a Vanderbilt. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I own the school. That's yeah. why that's why I wear this shirt. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to school there? No, it's my no. pops, man. Yeah. Nice homework, you idiot. Know, <laughs> Way to research, Trav. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so how did hot chicken influence your comedy? Yeah, well, my parents were like, why don't we eat hot chicken? Like, it, it's very easy. Uh, they're, uh, no, I, it's uh, – yeah, I, I think I think yeah, well, I think most people in any uh, there's not a ton of like uh, people that come from like a ton of money or something like that or like uh, uh, Chris Rock played one yeah. in that movie where he took over the rich guy's yeah. body. Yeah, that is true. he was good yeah. to stand up. Yeah, and that's a true story. Mm-hmm. It's a documentary. <laughs> documentary. Uh, yeah, they. Uh, but he. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. You just uh, you know, so many people move there. You uh, when you move, a big part of it too is moving younger. Like not that I was super young. I was uh, 23, I think, when I moved. Uh, but now that I'm 39, 23, so young, right? And you know, like that got, girl yeah. from Modern Family is probably yeah. 23, yeah. and it's so young. Like, uh, but like, so I think moving there and you move there with just like 
you don't know what to expect. You don't know what you're, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, you, I, th- I think not expecting anything is, right. like, a big part of it. And, you, and, like, not you're not expecting, like, making money. You're not expecting, like, that's why I think sometimes when guys start later, it's, like, it's hard because they might have, make money. They might have a career, like, right. where they're, like, Oh, like, and you get, so you gotta be able to start where you have, like, have nothing. You're like, I don't have, there's nothing I can, <laughs> right. there's no job that I'm, like, missing out on. Or, and if you say you start at 30 and you're five years in, you're probably like, hey, I should be, like, it's like, no, it's like, no. you may not be very good. It's years matter, like, so, like, yeah, like, no, it, like, you know, it, they would say the 10 years is, like, to make someone a really good comic. And, uh, so it doesn't matter when you start, you still need those 10 years. Like, you still Certainly need, agree. uh, all that time. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, you know, I don't know, like, yeah. like I'm at 15, yeah, and like it's you know, but you can see like 20s, like the difference of difference of 15 to five, 10 to five is it's wild. It, I it mean, absolutely it's, is. Was there, was there ever a point? I hear uh, a lot of comedians. I want to say I've heard Chappelle recently say it, but is there ever a point along those 15 years where you were like, yeah. Um, I need to pri- perhaps update my LinkedIn profile. Was there ever a <laughs> yeah. moment where you were just like, look, I- I've been in this bad boy for a long time. I've, I've gone through the battles in the industry. This is it or bust. Yeah. Uh, funny as I did, I-, I signed up for a LinkedIn profile once. <laughs> He's about, I think I thought you were supposed to. Like, I never had it. I, I would never. And it was in, uh, that was the hardest thing to cancel. Like, I was the hardest. LinkedIn mm, sure. was, like, the hardest to, like, I, I would get emails, and I'm like, I don't want this. Like, how do I get out of this LinkedIn? <laughs> I'm a comedian, yeah, damn it. Com- like, please. I, I signed up for it as a comedian. Like, it was, uh, but, yeah, I, I, I got lucky. With a like, really cheesy headshot. Yeah, like, just like, and they're, like, I'm thinking, events. like, yeah, they're going to hire me off LinkedIn. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what it is, you know. I think uh, back to your original question. I, I have a question too. I th- maybe Nate's the for at the forefront of having bachelorette parties at his comedy shows. Mm. Obviously, that's kind of the death punch to some yeah. of you guys in the shows. But you're from Nashville. That's become oh, the now capital that's a place to go. Yeah, that's I remember in uh, uh, Canada once. So in uh, I was in uh, Winnipeg. And there's a club there, and I remember being there, and they uh, they have a bachelorette party. But there in Canada, a lot of them they wear they they wear a wedding dress, like to the their bachelorette night. What? So the girl walks in the Made wedding dress, gentleman, and I'm coming from uh, Nash. Like my wife wanted to go to for a comedy show for her bachelorette party, and I was furious. I was like, you're not gonna. I was like, you can't do that. And she's like, why? And I was like, because it's the worst thing ever. And so you can't walk in there as like I feel like I'm letting down our comedy. <laughs> if I let my wife do this, uh, it's like a, somebody who bartends yeah. and their parents come out with them and don't tip. Like, what are yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, I remember the the girls had she had a wedding dress on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a nightmare. And uh, she was wonderful. <laughs> turns out, and there was another guy up front that was a nightmare and was like talking and drunk. And I mean, I said it during the show. I go, look. I, I, I told I stopped the guy. I was like, let me tell you something. I thought that girl in the wedding dress was going to be a chain. <laughs> and I was so wrong. She is perfect. Yeah. And you're the worst person I've ever met in my life. And you're dressed normal. <laughs> Who would have thought? And if know? only he knew that was coming from the inner reachings of your soul. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the most insulting thing you could ever tell yeah, somebody yeah. as a comedian. Like, you're worse than a bachelorette yeah, party. I, how is she not bad? <laughs> Right, and a full wedding dress at that. Full wedding dress. In a full wedding. Man, I'm excited to have you in town. St. Louis has treated you well over the years, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always been great. We've uh, I've come here my whole life. Like we can like uh, there was a you know St. Louis is a, a oh, you, for vacation when you're kids you drive out like mm-hmm. you know. What, do you go to Cardinals games or something like that? Yeah, yeah, Cardinals game, the Arch. We were seen you know it was like this is come see Cincinnati, a real, come see St. A real Louis. Mugging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. say murder like you've seen the St. Louis murder. <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's, that's the saying on the art. People uh, don't know that. That is. We're going to paint that up. So, again, Nate, if you'll hang out for just a few minutes, we'll get you out of here. We've got a poll question to update. And then we do this Maybe thing you can participate in the poll question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, uh, let's see. We put this out on Twitter. Well, we are, of course, a scientific show. So we right. put together some of the most scientific polls. Okay. And this poll, this I is a great question. this is going to certainly get the internets going. Gardner, what was the poll for today? Would you rather be called bro or bruh? This means a lot. Yeah, bro. Very serious. Or bruh. What's what? up, bro? Says a or, lot. Uh, 
What's up, bro? Which I don't I think do you use sup, bro. Like, what often do you usually? I don't think I, I don't know if I use either one, but. <laughs> right answer. I, hey, uh, wait, what, right huh? Answer. That's a good answer. Come on, I would, bro. I, yeah, I would, I would think I would prefer bro. Like, Ooh. I would want someone to call me bro. Oh, bra man. is like, I just don't think I'm around bra enough <laughs> to like, no, I would, mm-hmm. if someone said that, I would uh, like. <laughs> Please leave me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go this way. Uh, I would think day. they're trying it. Like, right. I would think like that they're like, yeah, I'm just trying it out. <laughs> Like, uh, you like, pat him on the back. Keep yeah, it up, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, work shopping. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gardner, what are our results? Uh, as it stands right now, 43%. Bro, 57%. Wow. Bro. People, people pandering to Travis. They think it's a hip-hop term. Yeah, they do. They Lil Bucci over there? Lil Bucci. Lil Bucci. Like, what up, bro? You familiar with uh, the Italian leisure sport bocce ball? I've heard of it, yeah. You have. Yeah. Travis uh, believed it was pronounced Bucci. Bucci so balls. Yeah. Now a little Bucci. I feel like people, Bucci. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like more people would listen or watch the sport if it was called Bucci ball. I, yeah. think, I, think, Bocci. I think St. Louis Live is kind of a lame name for a morning show. I think Denman and Lil Bucci in the morning. Oh, well, that I would. think Nate that would have been be, real yeah. excited to come yeah. in yeah. now. Ricky Smiley yeah. swoop us up quickly. You got yeah. the point. I think we'd that would be, be one of you. Go, Are you sure they want me in there? <laughs> like, that's how I would have started. <laughs> <laughs> no stadium comics yeah. available, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this the local hip hop station? <laughs> yeah, have, I don't. Have they seen a stand up? Yeah, yeah. Sure? I don't think this is going to. I've done it where I go in and you do a, you do like a hip hop station. And you're like, ah, yeah. I don't, are you? And you know, you, you don't. Wanna see, you can't say anything, but you're all like, you're like, the, I don't know if I'm supposed to go in. Like, the host is looking at yeah. you like, is he? Is he mad? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe his maybe his yeah. maybe his dad was black. What's a, yeah, what's a typical a, question? on a hip-hop station I, I always feel like it's like and they'll say things i would never say where it would be like uh, are you into the swirl and they're meaning do you like to sleep with black women like oh, that's yeah. a question i've heard them go after comics with so i don't know what you've experienced I even personally know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i don't remember i yeah there's nothing to say i mean you just sort of like it's fun like it's uh but it's like some of the times you're doing – I mean, sometimes you do stuff and the, you can just tell the – and this is just any radio station. You sure. go in where they're like, they have no idea where you're – they've done nothing. Like, so they're, <laughs> oh, comedy, like, huh? Make us yeah. laugh. They, yeah, they're, 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 uh, they start you can mentioning just, other comedians around you. Well, you can see you. they're reading your bio. Like, they're just like, like so you're from Old Hickory, Tennessee. Your dad is a magician or something. Like, and you're, like, and you're, it's like the questions are just going through what the bio is. Like, yes. you just, as they slowly get farther and farther down. I like – and then they maybe they're like, you know, I – used to watch that Seinfeld. That was yeah. very good. He was a comedian, yeah. right? Right? Yeah. Like kind of giving you the knowing nod yeah. as they're going through it. So, uh, Fair or foul is something we do at the end of every show. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's Travis's favorite. It's not necessarily embarrassing. What we do is that we give Sorry, our listeners a topic yeah. and our, our listeners email in their thoughts on said topic. It's not that complicated. Okay. What's the topic today? Uh, living as a kept man. And <sighs> I also nice included, life. I did include it this way. Living as a kept man, possibly in Frontenac, Missouri, which okay. is a wealthy suburb yeah. uh-huh. uh, just a few minutes away from there. Do you know any people who are kept men? Uh, I don't, is that like Stedman, like Stedman is your Stedman ultimate is example ulti- of Oprah? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. You got a lady. Who's I thought it was like. Like keeping, like getting a haircut. Like, well, yeah, you basically have to look <laughs> oh, yeah, well and take yeah. care of yourself. Yeah. But yeah, oh, the lady makes yeah, the money. The lady makes the money. She takes care of you yeah. and gives you. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'd rather do that or continue to do stand up. <laughs> yeah, or, uh, I can choose. Or, uh, like, y'all bring out a lady here that's like, you got a ton of money. I'm like, she say I can. We can uh, like. Uh, is it Oprah money? Yeah. Like, is it like <laughs> is it, if it's Oprah money? That's it's way Oprah different money. than like uh-huh. you're like, no, nah, she's like got a couple million dollars. You're like, all right, uh, Oprah's like a billionaire. Yeah, like, uh-huh. uh, Look, he's really working through it right yeah. now. I see that? <laughs> yeah, I think it would be like a matter of uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it depends on your. Uh, it's like whatever drive you have. Like I, I like uh, my buddy. Uh, Kind of stays at home. They have a kid. His wife is a dentist, and they own a dentist. Uh, they own their they own an office and uh, practice. Damn. And so she works. And I mean, he doesn't really work. He's kind of just stays. There. He's with his. He came over and brought his daughter. You know, his daughter's just with him uh, everywhere. And it is kind of crazy that you're like. He's just got to take his kid everywhere. And so what are you going to do later? He's like, this, yeah. this is it. No, she can, she's going to come, and you're like, <laughs> you're like, I've not even met my kid. Like, like, why don't you be a dude about this? Like, 
throwing these children in my face. But it's yeah, but like you know, I think he's just. It's like he's in the. He, he gets. He's in the dry. Like the the kept zone. The, it, yeah, it's like it's just. It's this thing that you get used to. It's a habit. Like interesting. Just like so. I think if he was happening. You would just, you would just. Do it. My wife made more money than me, like at the, when I first started comedy. Like, I mean, because mm-hmm. you're making zero, right? <laughs> and I do remember, I do remember all like she uh, money matters. Uh, not, I mean, not now, but I, I, I remember like you can't make decisions, and when you don't make any money, like you have no say. And uh, I remember just saying, "You're like, I need to make more money than her." Like that was, <laughs> like I just needed. You just, you like got to switch the balance. Because uh, I mean, like you know, it, like yeah, I mean, if Oprah's making, like, what did he can't say? Anything. And she's got so much money. She's got so much. She's money. from uh, Nashville, or well, she's born in Nashville, I think. Yep. Like, yeah, That's wild. there's a street uh, named after the street that she grew up on. Like, uh, really? Yeah, I, uh, I've been. Like, her, her parents like lived over there or something. Like, or my, I used to deliver people like mattresses and stuff like that. And we, I remember. Going to her See, street, Oprah nice. Street. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, she's got a street named after. Her. Like she's you know, doing all right. Like she, yeah, you can't as a dude, you can't be like, well, I got some things going. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen probably thinks he does. He's like, well, right. I got some stuff going on my own. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, I'm gonna. I'm gonna as go we out drive past your wife's street, <laughs> yeah. the town named the street after. Yeah. Like, I do. He's like, yeah, you know, I drive. I drive the car. You know? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, Steve and the boys want to grab a couple drinks. Uh, probably a late night. Nah, yeah, won't. No, no, no yeah, yeah. you're not doing that, buddy. Uh, let's do some fair foul. At this defining moment, change has come to America. People often ask me, what's fair or foul? Is that an Is it a segment? Who is that? Is it a movement? Is it hope? The sign of talent I can't say is voicing certain. your own interest. Time will be a true test of its power. But I can say, fair or foul is now and forever for the people. Gather around the radio with your loved ones and hold on to your butts. Mm. It's now time for fair. We give it back to you, the people. Or foul. We asked you about becoming a kept man, possibly in Frontenac. Some great submissions here, and we have an actual paid professional here to help us vote. So basically, if you like one, remember it. We'll throw some votes. They won a prize for, uh, for this at the end of it. So let's kick it off. Hi, my name's Brandy. I'm a fair-skinned blonde girl who's looking for love. I like a man who enjoys getting blazed and trolling black Twitter. Uh-oh. Sounds familiar. Uh-oh, go on. A poor credit score isn't a necessity, but it would help. Okay. He's talk got about, a new car. Talk about language. Ideally, he'd lack punctuality. <laughs> I'm sensing the theme here. And, uh, and you pick it up what he's putting down. Yes. And blame tardiness on a mythical bird. Mm-hmm. The hog fair. is real. Reading skills and a strong command of the English language are not a requirement. Oh thank God, I went Look to Mizzou. Look at you. <laughs> thank God. Blonde, this is from Blonde Girl with Glasses Looking for Tender Hookup. <laughs> That's Marvis's internet history. You let Do you, one of your coworkers look up. What? That's silly. We By the way. <laughs> yeah, we let whatever. Bree check his internet history on the air the other day. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. Bates like, I've looked that up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the best thing we've ever done on this show. <laughs> I, that was, you, you were so brave. Uh, like, yeah. Seriously. My anxiety. Things can Through get the roof. Weird. Through the roof. Damn it. <laughs> Did you hear Trump say damn it to Omarosa the other day? How great is that? That's the most fake damn it I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Oh, makes me so happy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Is Travis being a kept man in Frontenac fair or foul? Don't ask me. Why don't you ask one Mr. Abraham Lincoln? I think he had something to say about the subject of kept men. Mm. Uh, I thought we were uh, homosexual, potentially. Is uh, that what they're saying? I, 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 I thought we were about to go to audio of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, what did he have to say? <laughs> Let's listen in. He freed the captain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I thought he was going with it. Dang, I missed it completely. That's from Yale Hollander. Uh, Too smart. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Stop it with the lawyers. Is, Stop that's with what lawyers. I heard yelled at a blues game once. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were playing the Predators. Of this course. This was 10 years ago. This is my favorite Nate's moment. Nate's uncle was a, in town uh, visiting. Blues game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Chris Mason was the goalie for the Predators at the time. And... This is when the Blues were terrible, and everyone just moved down by the goal and everything down below, and they, they're just yelling at the goalie. It's like penis stuff. You got small penis. Sure, and sure. And it's, My friend decides to yell, 
Hey, Mason, you got nothing below the Mason-Dixon line. <laughs> and everyone was laughing at the sophomore sophomore juvenile jokes, and no one laughed at that. And off in the distance, you heard someone go, too smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in tears. Uh, yeah, I, was like, uh, yeah. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> like, how do you hear that at a Blues game? Yeah. We're a bunch of Hoosiers here. Yeah. Too smart. Too smart. Yeah. As he ran his fingers through his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> So happy. Greatest moment of Blue Squid yeah. Stanley Cup. Not going to top that. Yeah, that's unbelievable. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, keep it moving. Uh, foul, just so I have this right. Travis wants to stay home all day, mm-hmm. have an older woman pay for everything for him. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Uh, attend to all his needs, and he has zero responsibilities. Is that right? Yes. Sounds like he had an interesting relationship with his mom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should dive deeper into that. That's from Sigmund Freud Cigar. Mm hmm. Couple more. Bonjour. I was visiting Tucson on holiday. I, I looked across the bar and saw a striking lad. His hair trailed behind him like a beautiful mane. This is this is oddly specific. He looked dapper in his little glasses, and he, they spell lil l i l. And he was sauntering my way. We shared pleasantries and cocktails as we exchanged small talk. As we reached for the check, our hands touched. He looked me into my eyes and said. And I took my chance. Our lips locked, and I asked, want to be a kept? <laughs> I guess there is the other side of that. The dudes could be kept, too. Uh, Henrik Corni- Wait, he broke my heart that night. I think his name was Gardner. I wonder where he is. That's from Henrik Cornelius Swarthy Frenchman. I Please. once kissed a Frenchman in Tucson. <laughs> so gross. Uh, keep it a moving. Foul. I can't imagine few things more inhumane than this. A creature as majestic as me could never settle for anything less than town and country. <laughs> That's a slightly richer suburb. I'm a very clean, thoroughbred white guy. <laughs> oh, nice callback. That is a good callback. What was that, South Carolina? That was South Carolina. Yeah, I'm yeah. a thoroughbred. Don't arrest me. <laughs> Yes, this, white woman, I will not arrest you. This one has got me hopping mad. Kept man, I just, oh, that was from Jamie Crock, the last one. Kept man, I just wish my boyfriend could just keep it in his pants. Monogamy is not his forte. A cute guy walks by, or worse, a stout woman. <laughs> and my chocolate thunder semi-celebrity radio host just lets that bad boy out for anyone to touch. Mm. Still into the stout women? Uh, very much. I'm also impressed. I was a semi celebrity. <laughs> incredibly kind. Nate, uh, a little skeptical. Oh, yeah, well, I would as well. That's from Rod Stiffington. <laughs> <laughs> Is that his Christian name? You think? Mom, Rod yeah. 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 Fair. Being a kept man, you have to do whatever your wife says. No late nights out with the boys. You have to do all the house projects and put out whenever the wife wants. So basically, you're married, but you don't have to also put in 40 hours of work a week. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Tell you, man. Two more. Who Foul. Was that? Who was that? Oh, about? I'm sorry. That was from Jamie Moyers, Fancy Foyer. Foul. You think I want to be with them snooty rich people? I'd rather be a kept man in Pine Lawn. Mm. Oh. Slightly less economically uh, advanced county uh, town. I'd rather be a kept man in Pine Lawn, even though I'd be a kept man. You know, she'd still be cooking for me, and I'd be eating good. Be blessed, y'all. T.T.'s Pink Eye. Yeah. Finally, foul. There's nothing for guys at the Frontenac. It's all Prada, Coach, and Lululemon stores. It's almost like they know of a different group of soulless leeches to pander to. Mm. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Nate's got blue lemon pants on today, too. That's from the black sheep. Uh, that'll do it for Fairhouse. Nate, thanks for playing along. Man. Yeah. I appreciate I you hanging it. out. I mean, yeah. probably, he's going to go complain to exactly. Helium Man. Like, <laughs> like, that just, again. <laughs> like, that just cost you. That's not cost you, for real. Yeah, I messed up. You know you messed up, right? <laughs> uh, Gardner, you have a vote? Uh, I'll go with... Uh... Enric Cornelius, Swarthy <laughs> Frenchman. There were some goofy names. Did you remember one, Nate? Or? Uh, no, there was I'll a go, lot. I'll go with the, yeah. There you I go. T- I'm still thinking about the uh, too smart. <laughs> <laughs> that's, still like, that's still the funniest thing I've ever heard.